introduce to you uh, Professor Dr. Ali uh, of Bangkok University. He's associate, where he's associate professor. He's also editor in chief of Global Journal of Foreign Language Teaching and he's on the editorial board of a number of reputable journals. He's published several books uh, on CDA, the Art of Communication and Pragmatics. So I think we're all looking forward to uh, hearing his talk today on spin doctors using discourse, uh, critical discourse analysis. And I hope that I've spun uh, Dr. Rahimi's yeah, presentation that was a quite well. Spin doctoring through species discussing malpractice. So the, there are key terms in here that need to be uh, clarified, and I take it for granted that the audience has got the necessary information, the background about the, uh, the critical discourse analysis studies, because I haven't got the time to go through the details. So what I'm trying to do is to clarify the point through some examples and some instances in, in the journals and in the media. So the, the focus, the focal point, the point of this talk is on spin down. <laughs> and I reckon, I reckon the, the term <coughs> creates some novelty and some interest in the audience. Uh, <coughs> so what I'm trying to do is to delineate the concept. Can you hear me? To, to, to delineate the concept. Yeah, Probably that's a better idea. Yeah. yeah. To delineate the, the concept of uh, spin doctoring through species discussed in my practice. So what is spin doctor? Is spin doctoring? What uh, are speeches discussing about practice exercises in the media? And we go through the uh, examples. This is a sort of uh, communication. The communication that is based on, uh, could be based on an ideological perspective also of the fact that there is a uh, sort of axiological uh, orientation of the accuracy and the speaker in here. And uh, the elements are manufacturing consent and giving information and putting a positive or negative attitude towards a particular perspective could be oriented in this uh, sort of communication. So uh, I go through the idea of purpose of the presentation. Uh, that is to depict the main tenets of CDA. Of course, I, I cannot have the, the necessary time to, uh, to go through the details of CDA. CDA stands for critical discourse analysis. And to insist on the need for the practice of CDA to raise awareness of the effect of spin doctoring and its discursive malpractice. So these are basically the, uh, the main uh, issues. Uh, elaborated on in this talk. So, the, 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 what, why is a gap or the necessity of the application of CDA or critical discourse analysis studies and how to create the consciousness uh, about speed doctoring and what actually speed doctoring signifies and uh, what is discursive malpractice. The talk aims to, lo to lucidly delineate the otherwise nebulous discursive practices in, a social, in social and cultural structures. It shows how discourse and society are ideologically shaped by power and ideology. The concept of powerful, omnipotent spin doctors inculcating and indoctrinating certain ideologies has attracted immense attention. This talk tries to answer the question of what spin doctoring actually signifies, what areas of spin doctors are active in, and what linguistic techniques they employ. Discussion questions. To achieve the stated purposes, the following questions will be discussed. Number one, what can CDA do for us? Talk about the practical implications of uh, critical discourse analysis studies 
And number two, why do we need CDA more than ever before? And three, how does the spin doctoring lead to discursive malpractice? And four, how does the spin doctoring lead to the dissemination, inculcation, and naturalization of ideologies? What CDA can do? CDA can dissect the discursive practice to unmask how power is operated through discourse. How conventional wisdom, the givens, the way things are, in fact, subtle forms of governance and manipulation. Most importantly, how ideologies are and identities are created and naturalized by manipulative styles of language. Here we have the term conventional wisdom. Conventional wisdom in here is actually what uh, is naturalized and uh, constructed, and people actually have a tendency or a propensity to accept it as useful and helpful in all situations. So, when, when something turns into conventional wisdom, it turns out to be useful and helpful. So what the spin doctors actually try to do is to turn the information and the data uh, into conventional wisdom so that people have a tendency to accept them as, as truth and take it for granted. So this is actually what Chomsky has referred to as manufacturing consent and the fact that creation and naturalization of ideas through discourse turns any idea into a, a sort of conventional wisdom. So in the following parts, I'm going to give you some examples so that you can have a tangible analysis of what these uh, materials actually refer to. Why CDA is needed more than uh, ever? Advanced information and communication technology, I say take has naturalized the practice of spin doctoring. The spin doctoring has been accepted more than ever before as a method necessary for personal, organizational, or institutional survival. So here we also have the idea of spin doctoring. What is spin doctoring? What is spin? Spin is actually putting a positive or negative perspective on ideas, people, and events based on the, the, the audience and what the objective of our conversation might, might be. Here, we have the, the advancement of information technology. But now, you so say, we, we come up with a pandemic development of technologies and social media, uh, internet, and all that you know, uh, communication, online communication, which has made you know, manipulation and spin doctrine uh, a very prevalent uh, game issue. And you have the, the preponderance of all these you know, spin doctrine and practices going on every day. And all of us are every day dealing with the idea of uh, online uh, communication, which is replete with all these manipulative uh, uh, language. So, and spin doctrine has been accepted more than ever before as method necessary for survival. So, survival is not necessarily defined and materialized through. Uh, intellectual competency or material mental ability. Rather, the survival of the organizations are related to how you can put a positive spin on your own abilities, on your own, on, on your own competencies, and not necessarily uh, having a, a, a real inherent uh, ability of success. So success and failure are defined not by individuals uh, personal characteristics rather by the, the way they can put positive or negative spin on their characteristics. And that is actually a flop. That's a disaster. Because most of the time we see that uh, you know, meritoc there is no trace of meritocracy in the, in the organization. And the people that have, uh, have got you know, the, the, the power and they're exercising immense clout in the organizations at, at big boxes and stuff. They, they haven't got the the necessary uh, characteristics and qualifications. What they are they're supposed to, what, what they actually can very uh, effectively do is to embark on proper speed offering or proper manipulation and proper language or discourse. What characterizes a spin? So either and Hartman providing what what is what is a spin? So here spin means Providing biased interpretations in favor of oneself or against others. Uh, uh, 
teacher in the morning gave the idea of A group and R group alignment and also axiological alignment and disalignment that goes uh, directly to this, uh, to this idea. And he very comprehensively and effectively talked about the idea that, you know, the accuracy and the audience are not necessarily that out down there as thematic uh, unified. The audience and the accuracy even are shaped by the writers, reshaped and constructed and reconstructed by the writers and by the speakers uh, based upon the ideological perspectives and ideological, axiological orientations and objectives. In other words, based, uh, based upon the, uh, the goals and aspirations of the client, for instance, you know that the audience is shaped. And that is a, a sort of dramatic arrogance to even shape the audience and to produce the audience's desires and wants and needs, and that, that's what actually the spin doctors in the political, uh, in political organizations do. So the, the organizational culture fosters the idea that spin doctors or the people who manipulate others and control others through, through discourse are able to, to create <coughs> these manipulative, deceptive ta tactics to portray situation. So distorting facts or falsifying evidence. So, spin doctors are employed by, by, the, by the politicians or by the governments to distort realities, to change realities, and to, to falsify evidence. So the evidence, the ideas, the hard facts, even the hard facts are distorted. They are skewed in favor of a particular organization, in favor of a particular group, and also Concealing or covering up facts. This is a very important technique used by spin doctors. So spin doctors, as the term doctor here, the, the term doctor in here means like an engineer. The term doctor might mean distortion. For example, you have a doctor version of the Quran. It means the Quran is distorted. This is not genuine. This is a bogus version of the Quran. So doctor in here means uh, patching up or distortion or manipulation. So a doctor or an engineer, when you have an engineered version of something, like an engineered version of a gene or something, you go with the idea that this is not genuine. So <clears throat> an important technique by skin doctors is concealing or covering up facts. So they camouflage realities and they cover up reality and actually the, they tell people to uh, try to have them in a, in a sense undetectable, unobservable, uh, undistinguishable factors in the society. So that the negative aspect of societies and what's going on, that the lack of problems and erroneous irregularities are pushed in the background and not presented to the people, but presented as taboos or or like I, I have this stuff that that is that are not supposed to be to be talked about. So this is what spin doctors actually uh, try to do. A figurative used to mean patch up or piece together and falsify. Well trained professional. So doctor means somebody who distorts realities, who changes realities and events in favor of certain groups. The well-trained skin professionals are disguised under the following euphemism. You know euphemism. So they are called directors of communications, media advisors, communication managers, press secretaries, and publicists. So these are actually the putting the positive spin on the term spin doctors. In fact, you know, the, the spin doctors are not as a piece of Spin doctoring and spin doctor is in fact is a very pejorative, disparaging, impolite way of referring to a specialist. Accusing him or her of distortion, trickery, deception, and mal and discursive malpractice. So basically nobody claims or 
identifies himself with the uh, thing and speak up. They are called reputation, media advisors, PR specialists, uh, public relations specialists, lobbies, you yeah, see them in political, yeah, political uh, presidential elections, for instance, there are some spin doctors working for, for uh, potential candidates, and they are called, for instance, lobbies or uh, PRs. But basically, there are spin doctors create, creating lies and deceptions and uh, trickery rather than presentation of facts and reality. So, I hope the term spin is getting, or spin doctor is getting more clear now. So the term spin has, it got, it has got a negative connotation, bringing about the, the idea of lies, the idea of untruth, mispresentation, misinformation, misdirection, misguidance, and misunderstanding of the material, and trying to deceive people and to give them perspectives that are not necessarily true. To speed up touring as a profession, that's a disaster. Because there's a lot of budget in every country, basically, is allocated to speed up. They get, they are very expensive, hugely expensive people who are immensely paid only for the purpose of distortion of realities, mispresentation, misinformation, misguidance, misapplication of information, and trying to manipulate people for the purpose of government's uh, services and government's aspirations. So for instance, when there is war, every decision out there say that war is beautiful, war is magnificent, war is glorious, martyrdom, blah, blah, blah. And the other hand, you know, uh, for instance, uh, you have your advertisements and speed doctors talking about fitness. Small is beautiful. Be small, you are beautiful. Slender is beautiful. Slim is beautiful. This is speed doctoring of the fact that you know dieting is actually, and the diet is actually what speed doctoring uh, uh, is intended for. So manipulation is naturalized through the use of euphemisms. So under these euphemisms, speed doctors have become household family familiars and spin doctrine has become business as usual in the mass and social media. So, spin doctors responsibilities, what are their responsibilities? So, there are, there are spin doctors working for every government or companies. So, there are, are experts in advertising, experts in depression management, experts in persuasion. So, they can persuade you, they can convince you into buying their products and you are happy about it. And everybody, you are happy and you are joyful, and that is that is called subliminal seduction. By key, subliminal seduction means a sort of uh, subconscious or uh, unconscious uh, seduction into buying the product. So, keep track of all publicity to ensure fair representation of the client. So there are clients. So you, as a client. You want your, your name to be you want to be to, to be like the president, the next president of the country. So you employ the spin doctor, you pay a huge amount of money. Uh, this 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 spin doctor helps helps you have a very positive image in the society in terms of your intellectuality, your your moderation, your your abilities, your political acumen, your intelligence, your whatever. So all these are actually employed to promote your picture as a future president. So planning and implementing, impl implementing enhancing strategies to popularize the client's images. So here, again, the guy Peter is more reports talking about axiological alignment and axiological disalignment and the fact that also positive self-representation and negative other presentation. So basically the, more, the main uh, tenet or technique employed by the spin doctors is the technique called positive self-presentation and negative other presentation. In-group and out-group diversity antagonism 
and clash and conflict. So they are, they are there. They are the enemies, they are bad, they are notorious, they are malignant, ferocious, dangerous, uh, satanic. And we are the, the most beautiful, sunny, shiny, lovely, amiable, affable creatures on the earth. So that is a, an ideal situation that is the confrontation of in-group glorification as, as opposed to out-group uh, victimization and denigration and humiliation. So there, there is a way that to, to simply uh, glorify ourselves and our in-group characteristics and members and denigrate and degrade and humiliate the others. That is what the spin doctors do, actually. So, deploying commercial marketing techniques to impression management. This is a very important concept. Very important concept. What is impression management? Also, uh, talking about the addressee and the audience. Dealing with the audience as a client. Keep dealing with the people, for instance. Uh, we need to manage their, their, their impression. We need to control their impression, to create and inculcate a positive image about ourselves. That is called impression management. To try to persuade them into our own views and ideas and opinions, actually. To, to manufacture consent, to persuade them, to actually try to uh, actually direct, direct their activity to certain uh, realities or uh, cause. That is, called, that, that is another important uh, technique. Edward Bernays, first spin out. Did you have, did you have, Peter, did you happen to know, know this guy? You have any interaction or not? No interaction? Okay. This is probably too old, yeah? yeah that, that, he, he is the master of speed up, master of manipulation, deception. Ideological lies, master of untruth, control. This is Andy Coulson. What about this one? <laughs> you, you did talk to him in person. No, no, never got that close. <laughs> Not that close. You say away from him. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Prime Minister David Cameron's communications director. Communications director. How how, the, how can you replace it? Speak up. His communications director, uh, a former editor of Britain's News of the World newspaper, he resigned amid mounting pressure arising from the tabloid weekly hacking of telephone calls during his time at the Hell. So I think you, you, you followed the news about the, the hacking of telephone calls. And this is very intelligent, this pinned out. Judy Smith? Also, PR, public relations advice, to the first President Bush and Monica Lewinsky in the sex scandal with the former President Clinton, is now advising Sony Pictures in the Sony hacking scandal. Again, another scandal. So most of the time we see that they appear and they are used in a scandalous press pressurizing situations. So when they, everything is normal, we don't need these speed doctors. But most of the time, the governments are being to spin doctors. Their fallacies, their fallacious arguments, their lies, their, their uh, distortions to be able to survive the sensitive situations like wars, conflicts, uh, elections, political unrest, demonstrations, uh, protests. So spin doctors are called for help. So the, the, for instance, the, the protesters are called rebels or dangerous criminals or Whatever, I don't go to the details of this anyways. So you can envisage the other the other names applied to demonstrators and protesters. Here. Yes, there is I give you examples so that you know what spin doctoring means. Here. Spin doctoring by Scientology. You know you know Scientology. Uh, I would say this is a prevalent pandemic. But they themselves do not call themselves cult or, or a creed or illegal, illegitimate group. Rather than they call themselves a church, Scientology Church itself is a spin, legitimizing their existence. 
So very cool. They, they call them as Scientology Church, which means to put a positive spin that we, are, we belong to a religious group, we are not cults, we are not creeds, we are not embarking on sabotage or uh, profiteering or domineering behavior and threatening others and abusing them. We are actually God sent uh, group of individuals with divine uh, motives and incentives. Another important, I was, reading the, I was reading the other book the other day, I was reading the book called, and I strongly recommend that you read that book, it's called Free Economics. Free Economics. That's uh, the recent bestseller. Uh, that's a new novel, iconoclastic, unorthodox way of removing all the taken for granted uh, ideas and talk about the fact of incentive. What is incentive? Incentive is a motivation. For every human being, every human behavior is rooted in a sort of incentive or motivation. So anything that we do, regardless of you know, the consequence, we've got a sort of incentive or motivation behind that. That could be an emotional, philosophical, mental, physical, uh, animalistic, whatever, uh, motivation. So, incentive is actually the, the main cause of employing the, these uh, spin doctors because of human, basic human needs for survival, for, for power, for money, for sex, whatever. So, here, the, this, part, this is a part of Scientology. If you, if you want to read about Scientology, you can go to their website, Scientology.org. And that, that's a part that is taken from their side. I read it to you and see how they are embarking on dramatic, explicit, and even nause nauseating uh, speed doctor. So for some, material affluence brings anxiety. So that is psychology injunction or discourse. A knowing fear that if someone does not take away their heart uh, acquisition, the end of their days will prematurely arrive to finish the job. Others find death easier to face than a lifetime of assembly line slavery, while most in a less dramatic fashion simply buckle down to the lives of quiet desperation. In this new millennium, most individuals have no real grasp of the factors that govern their existence, and yet simply say that if they had a greater understanding of themselves and their fellows, they would be able to improve the conditions of and help themselves and others to live happier lives. This then is the purpose of Scientology to enable a man to improve his luck through understanding. So you are miserable. That, that's, that's the message of Scientology and all the cults. To render the, the people insecure, fearful, and hopeless and helpless and miserable, and say, okay, you are miserable, hopeless and helpless, and we have the solution to your problem. This is the solution to the problem. It's Scientology. Appeal to the Scientology. Pay to us. They are online. People are manipulated. They are deceived. They pay donation, but the money they call it donation money. So they, they go to the computer. They use the ATM and beautifully and eagerly they pay for Scientologists because they are under the influence of spin doctors. So this is called bogus donation. Have you heard of bogus donations? You know what bogus is? False. So sometimes, uh, you know, some organizations ask for money, like helping the needy in, in Nigeria, uh, helping them, uh, giving the money for, for the needy in the, in the Middle East, uh, helping, giving the money to the people, to the hungry, hungry people in, in Africa. But some of them are just bogus speed doctors. We don't know where the money ends up. The money ends up in Las, Las Vegas with a family or the guy with, with with a girlfriend, you're near the beach having fun. But you miserable guy, you have paid loads of money for, for this bogus donation because you are under the influence of this spin doctor. So this is the talk on Scientology. One is language styles. Dramatic. Using word picture, the description language in bar triggers to imagining along. Intense using words and very strong tones to provoke emotions and appeal to fear. Brief, this is the most important part of a lot of organizations. 
a lot of communities and calls and creeds is to appeal to fear, breathe hard and slavery and desperation. They really render you as hopeless. You need somebody external to help you. You cannot do it on your own. You need help from outside. Somebody who is higher, better, more divine, uh, uh, having extraterrestrial, uh, non-human, superhuman abilities or divine characteristics. So basically the, the main tenet is creation of frustration, fear, paranoia, uh, panic, desperation in the audience. And then they say, there is the malady and I am the remedy. That's the point. You are suffering from this disease and I have the medicine. The medicine is Scientology, the medicine is other cults, the, med the medicine is materialism, the medicine could be Marxism, the medicine could be whatever. So there is the malady and they have the remedy. So if you follow them, that's a really simplistic, preposterous uh, gullibility in fact. So I go to the next one, another instance of spin operating. You saw uh, important is appealing to the pyramids of needs. The spin doctors, religious, political, material, whatever, they appeal to the people's needs. They, they identify your needs. Your material needs, your emotional needs. And they, they, they identify your needs, your spiritual needs, your material, your physical needs. And they try to say that you need this, there's a vacancy, there's a gap. And we are the provider of these services and commodities. The commodity might be spiritual, mental, practical, uh, whatever. So the, the needs of the people are actually taken as the reference point. Again, organization, problem solution, organizational pattern. Difficulties and hardships in life. Then the purpose of the Scientology is stated, rendering the depiction of Scientology as giving the helping hand as a rescuer. Yes, you are desperate. Poor, desperate, miserable, disconsolate, sad individuals seeking help from the outsider. And we are the savior. We give you the helping hand. We rescue you from this miserable, pathetic situation. So, man is pathetic. Human being needs is miserable, is hopeless and helpless. Man cannot survive without outside help, instructions, guidance, enlightenment, all, that, all those beautiful terms and jargon, like enlightenment, insight, is, is instruction, spiritual guidance, all that stuff could be actually considered as a spin doctor to render the individual human beings as desperate and sad and sorrowful, needy creatures holding the hand for some guidance and help from the outside spin doctors, in fact. The next is reasoning, hasty generalization. This is very important in terms of logic. Logic and philosophy. Uh, making vague statements and claiming they apply to everyone. This technique in logic, you know, in logic we have premises and we have conclusions. That's easy. Like uh, man is mortal, John is a man, so John is mortal. It's a uh, sort of argumentation or syllogism. Uh, False thoughts, saying as if understanding of themselves and their fellows was the only condition leading to happiness. I read to Scientology discourse again. If they had a greater understanding of themselves and their fellows, they would be able to improve the conditions and help themselves and others to live happier lives. Again, Peter in the morning talked about commonality. I refer to Peter again. Commonality. And Andrew. Uh, belonging. We human beings have a feeling of togetherness, 
belong. I mean, we feel uh, great and joyful, a sort of ecstasy and euphoria when we are with the like-minded individuals. That's the reason why communities uh, are the best places for human beings to keep together and to share their ideas, their sense of belonging. So, but, but the thing I just use it as a cover protector that all of us in the community have got the same idea, removing and eradicating all the idiosyncratic personal characteristics at the expense of the community's good and purpose. So all the individualities, all the idiosyncratic characteristics and wants and desires are trampled upon for the concept of Scientology or the concept of Marxism, uh, Marxism or the concept of uh, Bohemian tendencies or hippism or other cults and stuff. So the idea of removal of individual characteristics for the purpose of the community is another problem and another exercise, uh, another practice exercise by spin doctors. I, I go to I, I go to the next example. Uh, example two is about spin doctoring in the Guantanamo scandal. Does it ring? I, I, I'm sure that you are following Guantanamo prison scandal. Uh, torture by the Americans, yes. presumably by the Americans, but you know that's a very complicated issue. That most of the uh, American uh, government officials and uh, the president probably have denied the existence of these torture uh, chambers and uh, rendering the prisoners there suffering from different kinds of psychological problems and regular irregularities, treating them like like uh, subhuman or animals and you know trying to frustrate their needs and stuff so here the u.s torture of prisoners associated with al-qaeda and terrorism at guantanamo included sleep de deprivation <coughs> these are instances of real practices literally they have been exercised and they have dramatically uh, shown to the public the sleep deprivation, sensory bombardment, religious humiliation, temperature extremes, and other psychological techniques. Uh, the torture was cons consummated with the waterboarding technique. That is the most uh, obnoxious, ferocious technique of presumably interrogation. So or torture anyways. The link of the, the torture to the mass media tainted the US image as the human rights caretaker. It destroyed the image. So, the three doctors in the Guantanamo scandal, language studies, euphemism, enhanced interrogation techniques instead of brutal, sadistic, venomous torture. So here, the, 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 the US government said that they are not actually torturing the people, they are simply using enhanced interrogation techniques. They are using enhanced interviews. Like. They, they call them their interviews. They are, they are in fact a, a very highly educated way of trying to, to embark from interviews or interrogation or asking for, for, for answers and not necessarily any physical torture going on. And then again, using that, the, the brutal, sadistic, venomous torture is the actual reality spin doctored into enhanced interrogation techniques. That's a dramatic way of presenting spin doctoring in, in that Guantanamo case. Intense, using superior appeal to the extreme order to justify the need for torture. The presumably accused terrorists are described as, again the same, the most dangerous, best trained, vicious killers on the face of the earth. An important uh, grandiose exaggeration of the nastiness of these individuals, of presumed nastiness of these individuals in this spin doctoring case. The spin doctoring by the US government. I believe that water boarding was torture and whatever legal rationale was used, it was a mistake. That is US President Barack Obama reaction. Do you find the reaction uh, fair enough? 
Again, the time using I play to suggest that this is only the speaker's own personal views, which do not affect the, legal, the legally made decision. So the US president believed, it makes it personal that I believe, and that it's not necessarily true. When you say that I believe it is the case, it's not necessarily something that is taken for granted or the truth or reality. It is something that I believe that is like that. And also, he, he says that's a mistake. But the proper, the proper way to react it is that this is an instance of uh, preposterous, brutal, barbaric torture as a, an instance of a scandalous behavior exercised by the American government. So brutality, uh, unethical brutality and barbarism are presented as a mistake. So mistake is something that is like not necessarily very serious. It's, it's something that can be done based, based on carelessness. So you see the idea, the severity of this savagery is diminished to a flop, to a mistake, to an error. Which is not necessarily, when you say something is, is a mistake or an error, it means that it is not systematic and intentional. It is an unintentional behavior which could be taken for granted. So, another instance of spin doctoring. Here you have passive voice using a state to suggest carelessness instead of using the term disaster or cat cat catastrophe, which means manifest the severity of the situation. Again, uh, defense, uh, U.S. Defense Secretary Robert M. Gates. I came to this job thinking that Guantanamo Bay should be closed. And again, former U.S. Secretary said, Colin Powell, if it were up to me, I would close Guantanamo not tomorrow, but this afternoon. So here, the speech act of denial, they certainly implies that they are not responsible for the wrongdoings because they are not the decision makers in charge. So here they say they had a non-committal way of approaching the, 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 the disaster. They would say that if I, if I were the, the, the US president, I would stop it immediately. But they are not, which means that I have no responsibility, I have no power in my hands to stop it. So probably they are actually uh, denying the responsibility, evading the responsibility, staying away from the disaster, staying away from this uh, catastrophic uh, torture of the prisoners uh, through different uh, animalistic uh, behavior. Again, the sentence implies that they are not responsible for the wrongdoings, they are not decision makers. The scene occurs by the US officials again. Uh, another term that is important is weasel words. What are weasel words? Weasel words are words that are ambiguous. They are unequivocal, hazy, fuzzy vocabulary items, which, which bring about the idea of uh, vagueness. So using vague language is another technique to stay away from the problem. Spin doctoring by the U.S. officials again. Alberto Mora, former Navy General Counsel. I skip this one. The, the, the technique here used is evasion. Fallacies and fallacious arguments are systematically employed by spin doctors. What are fallacies? I give you some examples of the dramatic application of these fallacies for fostering certain ideological perspectives. Here I give you. Fallacious arguments, tell the truth. Lie. Lie by omission and hard proof. Sometimes this is called omitting the part of the event that is embarrassing, humiliating, and negative. And I only talk about the positive points. So, for example, in the football commentary, where the, there is a problem. You know, they only talk about the, the, the positive points of the football players, the, the techniques and tactics and the, the, the physical fitness and stuff, but they don't talk about the, the result. They always talk about the, the referee, the referee was a problem, the referee was unfair, the referee had some... 
background conflict between the codes and whatever. So all these, you know, uh, nonsensical, preposterous statements uh, trying to justify the situation, to justification. So here, omission. Lie with the statistics. Probably one of the most effective ways to influence the crowd is through numbers. This is called number game. In spin doctors use numbers because people are a number. They are influenced by numbers, by statistics. Like for instance, they say 95% of the people attend, uh, had a positive view about this uh, idea. But the, the people at the meeting were only, for instance, two or three. So they are not representative. Using, uh, using statistics, there is a book that I strongly recommend that you read. It's called The Statistic Relation. The Statistic Relation between the statistical manipulation, giving all the, all the instances of statistical manipulation and distortion through the statisticians, uh, through the history. Uh, by, like, for, instance, for instance, presidential candidates or presidents always give numbers. Like inflation, I was the best president on earth. In, in two months, I reduced the inflation from 40% 40, 40 to, to 2%. But still, you see hardships and poverty and unemployment and everything going on. Why well, can't believe it? You see that uh, everything is so expensive. There is high rate of uh, inflation, high rate of uh, problems going on. And this uh, happens all over the world because there are big claims going on. Because it's easy to, to work with numbers. Live the statistics observational, observational selection. This is important. This is called cherry picking in the statistics and in, and in research. Ch cherry, cherry picking. Cherry picking means only you focus on certain part of the, the information, data, to the exclusion of the others. For example, you say that my students are the best. I, had, I was the most successful teacher at this organization because my students have got a high grade in listening comprehension. So what about reading and writing and other skills? So you only cherry pick certain areas about which your students are good, and you, you, you exclude the others. This is called uh, observational selection or cherry picking. So speed doctors are very good at cherry picking. They only present the positive attitudes, and they uh, actually in, uh, go through hiding the problems. Fallacious arguments, reversal of realities. Unsupported claims, exaggeration, imaginary evidence, false analogy. Unsupported claims, very important. Through, there, is a, there is a fallacy that is very common, it's called criteria generalities. So through unsupported, unwarranted claims, governments are able to, to control and to, to speed up the, the realities. So they say that we are creating, they, they have big, beautiful terms and statements. We are creating uh, happiness, joy, and equality, everybody equality, brotherhood, uh, sisterhood, and stuff like that. All that beautiful job. So you see that these are uh, simply unsupported, unwarranted claims. Exaggeration, grandiose, exaggerated language, <laughs> giving some people the status of superhuman, holy, or divine characteristics and giving the others uh, some sort of inferior insignificance. So that there is this tendency to do it. Imaginary evidence. Some, some evidence is imaginary. The evidence is uh, not necessarily practically observable. So we see that this evidence is not uh, warranted and acceptable. And false analogy. Similes. And uh, metaphors, which are called unrelated, irrelevant, but they are used by these people. Play on emotion, very important, appealing to people's emotions. So people have got emotions of love, humanity, peace, and, and they like it. So they appeal to these needs. And this is also another uh, way of coming up with the Maslow's uh, pyramid of needs. Apply names. Sometimes it, the speed doctors want to impress you. They use a lot of authorities. They, this is called appealing to authorities. Because then authorities, like religious authorities or scientific authorities, 
And I say Chomsky said that, and I, 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 this is called actually name calling. I call a lot, a lot of names. Like in music, I, I want to impress you and I say that I'm an expert in music. And I put a positive spin on myself as a musician. I say, for, for example, uh, Dark Straits, uh, Pearl Jam, Cold Chisel, that is not your favorite. Cold Chisel. Uh, and I, I use a lot of terms, so you are impressed. Labels, blame a scapegoat, flattery. Scapegoat is an important political move by state actors. So most of the time when there, when there is a problem, when somebody is killed, somebody is suffocated, there is, there is a rape case or whatever, most of the time the poor, uh, weak, disenfranchised, marginalized section of society are escaping. 